Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to be going over the protein tips that can help you to achieve your weight loss and wellness goals. You know, of course, we're in the intermittent fasting challenge right now. And something that we talked a lot about in the last live stream is just how important what you eat during your eating window is for achieving your weight loss and wellness goals. If you're eating the wrong types of foods or not enough of the right types of foods during your eating window, even if you're using intermittent fasting, it's really possible to not achieve your goals, to plateau, or even to gain weight. So today we're going to be going over the protein tips for what you can actually eat within your eating window to help you achieve those goals. Um, if you guys happen to be new here, my name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition and human performance. Um, and we are in week three of the fall intermittent fasting challenge. If you guys are just joining in, if you want to still um, join in for the last two weeks of the challenge, it's a 28 day challenge. Uh, you can check out the uh, link in the description below for how to join. All right, let's dive into it. So what we found with research is that protein and intermittent fasting does, when you combine those two, that's when you can really help to double down and get the best results. Both, um, there's one study I've mentioned a couple of times in some of my videos in the past, but there's a study that actually recently compared a higher protein intake um, versus just typical calorie restriction and versus intermittent fasting. Each of the three groups had the same amount of total calories that they were eating, but the study found that the high protein group actually had the best results when it came to um, reduce body fat, weight loss, and improve blood lipid levels. So it's really important if we are looking to achieve our goals with intermittent fasting and get the benefits of intermittent fasting while also achieving a weight loss goal that we combine these two so that we can get the best of both worlds. Um, which by the way, for the studies I mentioned today, if you guys want to check those out, you can see the DOI, which is the marker for how you can find the studies um, that is down at the bottom of each of these slides. So that's the high protein versus calories in, calories out versus IF study. Okay, so what are those benefits of protein? Like, why is it actually helpful for helping to achieve a weight loss goal? Um, first of all, body recomposition. Protein is the main macronutrient, the main food source that actually helps us to achieve a body recomposition goal, which really, if your goal is weight loss, that should be your goal. You're not looking to just lose weight. You're looking to decrease body fat and maintain or even slightly increase muscle mass. Um, so protein has been found to help reduce body fat, as we saw with that last study and in numerous studies. Um, the One of the main reasons why is because it is so satiating. It helps to reduce hunger. It helps to reduce cravings, especially cravings for sugar. So if you guys have seen my um, whole how it is that I actually uh, got rid of my sugar cravings um, series that I did, I think is back during the spring. I talk a lot about protein and the effects of protein and why it's so important to get enough. It's because it does really help to reduce sugar cravings. So if you struggle with sugar cravings, getting a protein is so key to help prevent that. Um, but also protein helps to maintain or even slightly increase muscle mass. So if your goal is weight loss, you're probably not really thinking about muscle as being like a really big important factor for helping you to achieve your goals. But muscle is so important to our metabolism. It helps us to also be um, less sensitive to carbohydrates. So if you are very carb sensitive, if you're more insulin resistant, if we can help to increase muscle mass a bit by combining protein and resistance training together, that helps to make it so that you can become less carbohydrate sensitive and therefore have a lot more flexibility with what you're able to eat while still achieving your goals. Um, and uh, also prevents weight regain. So when we're able to maintain muscle mass because we're eating enough protein within our diet, it makes it so that we're able to prevent the weight regain because our muscle is making our body more active metabolically um, and because we are less carb sensitive. So studies have found that when we have that slightly higher protein intake, and I'm saying higher protein intake, but we're not talking about like 50% of your intake being protein. We're just talking about higher than what most people are eating. Um, it's been found to help prevent weight regain. So not only can help you to achieve your weight loss goals, but also um, reduce hunger, reduce cravings and prevent that uh, weight from coming back. So all really important factors. Um, and then just, I threw in here, even though like this is a, a big category, but it is so important, repairs tissue in the body. So that is protein's main job. It actually helps to repair all the various tissues within our body. So after a workout is what we typically think of, but even just from the standard wear and tear of a day. So even if you aren't an athlete, even if you aren't exercising at a high level, our body's always breaking down a bit and we need that protein to have the amino acids to help repair. So protein is super, super important. 
So now we need to know how much you actually need to be eating to see these benefits. So a lot of people, like I mentioned, a lot of people, um, I see this when working with people one-on-one, -on -one. Um, you can see it reflected in studies, but a lot of people are really under consuming protein, which is why so many people crave starches, crave chips, crave uh, crackers, crave sugar. Um, it's because we're not getting enough protein to help suppress those cravings for the, that fast energy source. So um, a lot of jargon on here, but I actually wanted to walk you guys through this on how you can actually um, calculate how much protein you need. So studies show anywhere between 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight is really ideal. I found um, closer to 1.6 to be more ideal for weight loss. So what that means, if you take out, I know probably most people have their phone with them. If you take out your phone and open up, and I want you guys to do this with me so you can actually like get some really solid, valuable information to immediately apply right after this. Take out your phone, take out your calculator. So if you are, um, if you already know your weight in kilograms, then you're going to multiply your weight in kilograms by 1.6. If you only know your weight in pounds, you're going to multiply your weight by 0.73. So just to give an example, if you weigh, let me see if I can show this to you guys right here. If you weigh 140 pounds, then you're going to multiply that by 0.73 right here, 0.73. And then that amount is going to be how much protein that um, ideally you'll want to aim for to see these benefits. So how much protein you're going to eat in a day. So let me know in the chat if you guys already went through this calculation, what it is that you're going to be needing to aim for, and if you think you're getting anywhere close to this. So just remember, you want to, if you are like in pretty much anywhere other than the US where most people use kilograms to measure their weight, you'll want to uh, multiply your weight by 1.6 to get the amount of total protein needed to eat in a day. Um, if you're in the US or anywhere else that measures weight in pounds, then you want to multiply it by 0.73. And that gives you the total amount of protein needed in a day to see some of these benefits. Um, one thing I just wanted to note, because I know that in a lot of other countries, uh, food is measured in grams. So when we're talking about total grams of protein, we're not talking about total grams of the weight of a protein rich food. So there's a big difference there. Like if you measure uh, your ground beef and you have like 100 grams of ground beef that you're eating at night, there's not 100 grams worth of protein in that ground beef. So just a, a big caveat there, it's usually going to be maybe about 30 grams of protein. That's in 100 grams of uh, ground beef measured by weight. So it's important to make sure you know the amount of um, protein that's in various protein sources. I've done a video on this in the past um, where I actually show visuals of what this looks like for 30 grams worth of protein. If you type in like, uh, I think the title is like protein is great for weight loss, but you're doing it wrong. Check that video out. And I have some great visuals of what that actually looks like. So let me know in the chat how much you guys are going to be aiming for. That's a great resource for calculating out your protein, which leads me into what types of protein or like what is protein? <laughs> so what type of protein should you really be eating to see these benefits? There is a big difference between all the various types of proteins. This is something that when I was in school for um, my undergrad for studying uh, nutrition and dietetics, this was not something that they really taught us. It was more so in my master's that I had to learn this and then further reading later on. But quality of the protein really, really matters when you're looking to achieve your goals and see these benefits. This is really evidenced in um, or evident in uh, a recent study where they compared vegetarian versus omnivores. So vegetarian are those who will still eat typically still eat eggs and dairy. So they're still getting some animal based proteins, um, but they're not eating like fish, sometimes they will, depends on the type of vegetarian or um, chicken or beef versus an omnivore who eats all different types of animal-based proteins as well as plant-based proteins. The study found that even though each group was eating the same amount of total protein, so the same amount, like let's say 100 grams of protein in the day, um, the omnivore group had higher muscle mass with that same amount of total protein. So they were, their body was actually using that protein so much better, so much more efficiently because it was a higher quality protein that they're eating, even though it was the exact same amount. So it's really important to understand that the quality of protein really matters. So we want to aim for what are called high diaz proteins. Um, this is a live stream. So we're going a little bit more into the weeds with this type of um, video content. I do go more into the diaz proteins. If you want to learn more about what that is, um, 
and like how it's calculated, etc. I have a blog post on this. If you type in like Autumn Bates top 10 proteins, um, then that blog post should pop up. So if you're like a nutrition nerd and you want to learn more about that dyads, then you can check that out on my blog. Um, but basically what the dyads system means is it's just the a measurement of the quality of protein. So a measurement of how well your body's actually able to absorb it and use it as protein. Uh, the highest dyads, the, this means the, the highest quality proteins are really any animal-based proteins. Um, so eggs, dairy, um, whey, chicken, beef, lamb, pork, turkey, venison, fish, anything that comes from an animal is going to have the highest dyads. We're able to most efficiently use it as a protein source. Now, if you are 100% plant-based or you want to have a mix of plant-based um, proteins in there, it's really important that you know what are going to be the best sources. So the generally speaking, the highest dyads um, proteins from plant-based sources are going to be fermented soy. I'm personally not a huge fan of soy, but if you're going to have it, fermented is more ideal. Um, edamame, and there are certain legumes like I mentioned, check out that blog post on um, just type Autumn Bates top 10 proteins. Um, that one should pop up and gives a full list of uh, the best proteins that are animal based, um, vegetarian, as well as plant based. So you can get an idea of what your various options are. But I did put on here to watch the carb count because when you are um, looking to achieve a weight loss goal, obviously the starchier foods are going to cause a bit more of an insulin spike. And typically speaking, the um, plant-based proteins are going to have a lot more starch compared to the protein content. So it might be like 50% or 60% um, carbohydrate, maybe 40% protein if it's even that high. Um, soy is an exception. It is pretty high in protein with the carbohydrate count being pretty low. So you want to make sure that you're watching out for this, choosing the highest quality proteins you can that are going to fit um, your specific needs and dietary preferences. Okay, so when should you actually eat it? We've covered how much to eat, um, the types of protein, but when do you actually eat it? So with intermittent fasting, obviously you wanna eat it during your eating window. You can't eat it during your fast because that would break a fast. So we do wanna eat it during the eating window. This is also why I really harp on making sure that your um, fast isn't too long. You wanna make sure that you're balancing out your fast with your feast, that you're able to fit in all this protein intake within your eating window. If not, then we get some of the negative effects of not eating enough protein. So we don't get those positive benefits, the, the fat loss benefits, the body recomposition benefits, the muscle maintenance um, benefits when we aren't eating enough protein during our eating window. So when do we want to eat it? Every single meal. If you're following my programs and you are sticking to meals and not incorporating snacks and every one of your meals, like with my recipes, are going to be centered around a high quality protein source first. And we want to aim to evenly split the protein throughout the day. So you're not just having a ton of protein at one meal and then not very much later on, because then you won't get those same uh, satiety benefits um, by having the protein like front loaded and then not enough later. You're not going to get as full and satisfied from your meals later um, and you're more likely to crave sugar. So we want to try and aim to have the, the high quality protein split evenly between those meals. So I put on here for an example, if your goal is that you need to be eating um, 90 grams of complete high quality protein per day, you want to aim for having about 30 grams of protein per meal. So I do have, like I mentioned, I do have a video where I actually show what this looks like. If you type into um, YouTube, protein is great for weight loss, but you're doing it wrong. That video shows you specifically like the, what it looks like for 30 grams of protein of high quality sources, including vegetarian and plant-based sources. So if you aren't sure of how much that is, make sure you check that out. Otherwise, um, it would be a good idea even to just once or twice weigh out um, your protein just so you know how much you're getting and just so you know that you're getting the right amount. Um, so for example, 30 grams of uh, protein from like beef is usually going to be about roughly four ounces cooked beef. So you can measure out, make sure you're actually getting four ounces cooked to hit that 30 grams as an example. Um, so I recommend typically to my clients to only count high diaz proteins for best results. So if you were somebody who was actually uh, tracking calories, which I don't really recommend, I, I have a full video on that as well for why, um, but if you were actually tracking calories, then one thing that the calorie tracker will do is show you your total protein intake, which might sound like what you're 
trying to look for. But in reality, there's a lot of um, low quality proteins like in peanut butter, for example, that really isn't a high diet protein and isn't going to have those positive benefits in the same way as some of these other proteins. Um, so you want to make sure that you're only counting the high diet proteins for best results. So that would be any of the items on the list or the blog post I mentioned um, to make sure that you're really um, that you're not just filling up on the wrong types of proteins, that you're really accounting for the best proteins that will help to serve your goals. Uh, and then lastly, don't stress on the specific timing or lastly for this section, don't stress on the specific timing. Just try and have it be evenly spaced within your eating window. Um, there are some intricacies you can get around in terms of real specific timing uh, in relation to your exercise. But unless you are looking to massively increase muscle mass, um, like if you are a bodybuilder, if you are an athlete of some sort, that timing might be more prevalent. But if you are looking to maintain or slightly increase muscle mass and achieve a weight loss goal, just make sure that you're hitting that amount of protein your body needs and don't stress too much on if it's like an hour or two hours away from your workout. Okay. Next up, um, tips to actually getting in more protein. Once you actually realize how much protein you truly need and you pay attention to what you're getting in each day, you're probably gonna realize you're you're really under eating on protein. Um, so here are some of the tips that I found useful for my clients, for the AN community on getting in more protein. First of all, cottage cheese and skier or Greek yogurt. These are so, if you're vegetarian or omnivorous, these are so great for fitting in a lot of protein. Um, both are sneakily high, or I guess all three are really sneakily high in protein. Um, cottage cheese, is especially skier, um, is especially really high in protein. Um, so these are great to make like cottage cheese bowls, or you can see in this picture right here, I have my protein pancakes. Um, but I'll obviously already have protein in there, but then I top it with a little bit of cottage cheese, which acts as like a nice sauce for the protein pancakes without adding in sugar. Um, and it also adds in additional protein or you can have like a skier or Greek yogurt bowl and you could even stir protein powder into the skier or Greek yogurt, which could add a nice taste, like a nice um, zero sugar um, like sweetness if you want and um, vanilla flavor if you want while also getting significantly higher amounts of protein, which I put my zero sugar protein powder on here. Obviously, it's a really easy way to sneak in um, protein into the yogurt bowls, into making protein pancakes, um, into smoothies. Super easy. Have it right here. I'm going to be breaking my fast in a little bit right after this and having a smoothie with a lot of protein. Um, and then pairing eggs with other proteins is another really great thing to consider. So if you love eating eggs for breakfast, eggs are great. Eggs are fantastic, high quality protein source, very high diaz, but they also are sneakily low in protein. So eggs usually have about five or six grams of protein per egg. And if you had the goal of trying to get 30 grams at that one meal, you need about like five or six eggs to achieve that. <laughs> so that's a lot of eggs. Most people um, don't really want to eat five or six eggs at a meal. Um, so usually like two to three is most people's max on what they're willing to eat of eggs at a single meal. But in order to bridge that gap, so you're not just getting 12 or 18 grams of protein, but you're hitting your actual protein needs, you can then pair eggs with other sources of protein, like the typical eggs and um, like steak, steak and eggs. I mean, steak and eggs combo. I've actually never tried that combo, but I do have a lot of clients who really like that. Um, pairing it with breakfast sausage. Um, salmon locks is another great way to add in a higher amount of protein. Um, that's not just eggs. And you get your high quality omega-3 fatty acids with salmon locks. So it's a great option. Speaking of fish, canned tuna. So canned tuna usually has, if you're getting like the four ounce cans, usually has about 35 to 40 grams of protein per can. So really jam packed with protein already pre-cooked. It's one of my favorite things that I always have in my pantry because it's so easy. You can just quickly add it to a salad. You can make a tuna salad. Um, if you're like a little bit more fancy and you want to make like the tuna, like uh, cakes, you know, like little patties. <laughs> you could do that as well. Um, along those same lines, rotisserie chicken is fantastic because you can buy that pre-cooked at the grocery store and just tear it off the chicken and it's ready to go. So rotisserie chicken is another one of my like protein hacks that I often give to my community or um, my clients where if you are struggling to fit in more protein, this is such an easy way you can add it into any salad, any meal um, and fit in a lot more protein. 
uh, protein pancakes and waffles. This is especially great if you aren't particularly a fan of like eggs for breakfast or yogurts. Um, you can have protein pancakes or waffles, which I have multiple recipes on my blog. Um, I also recently shared my most recent favorite um, chocolate chip protein waffle recipe on YouTube. So you can check that out as well. Uh, but this is such an easy way to sneak in a lot of protein, about 26 grams of protein per serving without really without any sugar, um, without any added sugar, especially. And you could even um, a little pro tip that one of the AM peeps had brought up to me and had emailed to me the other day, which I thought was brilliant. You could swap out the banana and put in a quarter cup of cottage cheese within the base of the um, protein pancakes uh, to get even more protein and even less um, natural sugar in there too. So I haven't tried that out, but that sounds really smart to me and I'm gonna be testing that out this week. Um, and then if you are plant-based, tempeh, it's a great option that you can crumble up and use instead of like ground beef in recipes. It's, it's not an item that you have to cook um, and it's very high in protein. So if you're plant-based, tempeh is a great option. Then obviously, like I mentioned, my zero sugar protein powder, this is something that I use every single day. Um, I love it. <laughs> it was specifically designed to actually use in recipes so it actually tastes good. It tastes great. Zero grams of sugar and the high quality protein in there. So I specifically chose whey isolate because I'm a little bit lactose intolerant and a lot of other whey products um, are still going to contain a higher amount of lactose like whey concentrate or milk protein concentrate, which is a cheaper version of um, the whey protein. But a lot of companies will use that um, because it is cheaper, but it is uh, higher in lactose. So that's why a lot of people tend to have some negative responses to whey. I chose whey isolate for that exact reason because I personally can't handle that and I wanted to make sure it was going to be more tailored for gut health as well, um, as well as high quality protein too. So if you guys want to check out my zero sugar protein powder, make the protein pancakes, protein smoothies, I'll have it linked. I believe I have it linked down description below, um, but you can also find it on my website at autumnlnutrition.com. So autumn, E-L-L-E, nutrition.com. Okay. And if you guys, like I mentioned, if you want to still join the fall challenge, this is just week three. We still have this week and next week. So two more weeks going on. Um, it's an amazing challenge full of amazing supportive people in the Facebook group, amazing meals, protein rich meals. Um, obviously, a lot of support you can see within the chat, too. Um, but you can check out the details for how to join. It's not too late. You can still have a lot of really great drastic improvements in terms of how you feel your energy levels and even start to make um you know, uh, progress towards your weight loss and wellness goals, even within two weeks. So if you want those details for how to join, check out the link in the description down below. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go through and answer some questions. So if you guys have some questions, uh, make sure to put four question marks before and after your question in the chat. And, um, and I'll try and get to as many as I can. But first, <laughs> all of my liquids, water, coffee. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Just had chocolate pancakes. Yum. And topped with skier. Yeah. That's like such a nice little hack if you like to make protein pancakes, um, but you're still a little short on your protein intake, adding on skier cottage cheese, which skier is kind of like a kind of similar to Greek yogurt um, or regular Greek yogurt. It adds like a sauce to it that doesn't have any type of added sugar, uh, but it also is going to add even more protein into your meal. Uh, Elizabeth, can you mix your protein powder with water? Yes, you can. Um, I always recommend trying to have your meals be protein, fat, and fiber focused. You'll, you guys will see that in my programs. I've just found the most success when you combine all of those and you don't just isolate just protein or just fat or just fiber. So you can, if you're having it alongside a meal, like if you're already having a meal and you notice that you need to have a little bit more protein. And so you, um, have my protein powder, mix it with water, shake it up, and you can have it on the side. I just, you know, for best results, I recommend combining all three of those, protein, fat, and fiber. Oh, thank you. Best protein powder. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to scroll up to the top and see if I can try and answer some of the earlier ones. <laughs> just broke my fast with Autumn's Yummy Pancakes. Elizabeth, good morning. And hi, Autumn, watching from South Africa. Awesome. Okay, yeah. 
I see some some of you guys did calculate your protein, which if you're just um, tuning in live right now, earlier in the live stream, we go over how to actually calculate protein needs. Uh, make sure you rewind back because the very, very simple um, calculation, because a lot of people um, didn't know that they were under or didn't know that their protein needs are so high. So Patricia uh, needs 88 grams. Um, I know I don't eat enough protein and I'm always looking for high protein meals and snacks. Yeah, it's really good to focus on getting in that high quality protein. Okay, so good question. So please confirm if we should be using our goal weight to calculate our protein needs. So a good rule of thumb, if you, going back to that protein calculation, um, if you have a BMI, which is the body mass index of above 30, then you want to aim for your goal weight. If you um, are below that, then you can just use your current weight. I go into a little bit more detail in one of my videos on how to calculate your protein needs on the reasoning behind that. But if your BMI is above 30, go with your goal. If it's below 30, then, then you can go with your current. Um, if you're not sure how to calculate your BMI, so many free calculators online. Just type into Google how, uh, BMI calculator and there's a lot that will pop up. Um, yes, yeah, so a lot of questions around if you should be using your ideal or current. <laughs> and thank you for giving it in pounds. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I, I know it's it's good to be able to have both of those. I realize my audience is very international. Um, so I wanna make sure to help everybody out. Um, Elizabeth. I use my goal weight because my BMI is pretty high. I'm aiming for 130 grams. Still seems high. Can I count edamame protein? Yeah, edamame um, can count. Edamame is a complete protein or as close to complete protein as a lot of the plant-based proteins can get. Um, so you can count that. And the carbohydrate count is generally a little bit lower too. Oh, thank you. You look great. You bounce back fast. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, for those of you guys wondering, I just had a baby a couple months ago. Um, currently on my own weight loss and wellness journey, really focused on body recomp. So everything I'm going over with you guys is exactly what I'm doing for my journey as well, um, especially making sure I'm hitting my protein needs. Like seriously, my protein powder, such a game changer <laughs> for making sure you get enough protein in. Uh Oh, David, congrats. I've lost 75, 75 pounds since Valentine's Day. Thanks to your videos. God bless you, Autumn. You saved my life. Wow. Congratulations, David. That's that's really amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Okay, Juliana, I have a two like two meals per day. I break my fast with double protein smoothie and then a protein meal in the evening and I have no sugar cravings. I use the 1.6 grams calculation. Perfect. You're killing it. Uh, oh, thank you. Your protein powder is so worth it. I love it and recommend it to anyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, we worked really, really hard on developing it, especially with the flavor. I wanted to make sure to balance out the flavor so it tasted amazing in recipes because so many other protein powders they just like are so overwhelming, either so overwhelming in flavor or in sweetness, where if you actually add it into a recipe, like in protein pancakes or in a smoothie, it's like you can't taste anything else other than like the caramel mocha latte flavor <laughs> that's in the protein powder. Um, so we balance that out with making sure we use high quality proteins as well. And I'm glad you guys are loving it. Adriana, I like to eat liver. How many grams of protein in a four in four ounces of liver? I don't have that off the top of my head, um, but you can check that. There's one app that I recommend using for helping to figure out how much protein is in certain different types of foods. Uh, it's called Chronometer, like C R O N O meter, like cr Chrono meter. Um, that's a good app just to help figure out like how much protein or net carbs are in certain foods. I don't usually recommend counting calories, but if you need just a little bit of help with determining how much protein is in certain foods, that's a good app to use. And good on you for enjoying liver. I, I really tried. <laughs> I can't do it. I want to try and sneak it into more recipes, though, because it is so beneficial. Guilen, hello from Canada. <laughs> Uh, good morning. 
Okay. Brianna, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but what are your feelings on Catalina Crunch cereal? So I actually don't have the specific nutrition facts in front of me, but I believe it's one of the ones that uses like pea protein. I don't quote me on that, but I think it's one of the higher protein cereals. And there's a few on the market um, where you'll see that it's like a high protein, like zero grain cereal. Obviously, it's going to be better than regular cereal because usually, and again, I'm not sure on the specific ingredients, they don't have added sugar, but often they have a lot of like sugar alcohols, um, which for a lot of people can cause severe gut gut distress for lack of a better word, um, bloating or um, constipation or diarrhea. So I usually don't recommend it for that reason. Um, plus, I believe they are usually made with like pea protein. I'm not sure on that, but pea protein is just such a low quality protein that is one that, you know, just um, pretty low diaz. So it's not a great source of protein because it's not absorbed as well as some of the others. It also, because the sweet flavor tends to be so strong to try and mimic other sources of cereal that I've just found when you have like such a hyper palatable sweet flavor, um, even if it's from better sources, it's still going to typically cause for most people more sugar cravings throughout the day. So my personal take, I, I never recommend it for my clients. If it's one that you're having on the occasion as an alternative to regular cereal, just like as a treat every now and then, it's obviously a better option, but it's not one that I would like recommend on a daily basis, especially because cereal is a, one of those habit forming foods. It's not like you can, let's give ice cream as an example, where ice cream Obviously not something that's really supportive of a weight loss goal, but you can go out and have ice cream as a treat. Like you can go out and not keep it in the house and go out to um, like a ice cream shop with family for a celebration and have like one scoop of ice cream for your treat for like that week or for your, your birthday or, or something. You can't really do the same thing with cereal. Cereal, you buy a box of it, it's habit forming, it's in your pantry and you're more likely obviously going to have it on a daily basis. Although when I was in college, there was a, a cereal bar. <laughs> so I guess if you're going to have it just like as a celebration treat, then that's fine. But it's typically a, a habit forming food. Okay, how to avoid overdoing calories with the increase in protein. So one thing, um, if you were, if you joined in earlier in the live stream, uh, you saw this, if not, definitely rewind to the beginning because I go over the benefits of protein, but protein is so incredibly satiating that it is so hard to overeat when you're eating the right types of protein. Protein causes our body to release the satiety hormone peptide YY, which literally tells our brain we're full, we're satisfied, we don't need to eat. People don't believe me on this until they actually try it themselves, um, where they're like, oh, like I... I could eat so much. I can eat so much throughout the day. Um, I'm never actually full. I'm never actually satisfied. Just eating more food. I feel like work against my goals. Then they actually address the amount of protein they're eating and make sure they're getting it from high quality sources. And it is such a game changer. Like I was in that same camp as well, where I would graze all day. I would eat so much food. But then once I actually um, addressed how much protein I was getting and from the right types of sources, your appetite just really balances out. You're able to actually go without having snacks between meals, without having cravings, um, especially for sugar, because our satiety hormones are so activated. So for that reason, especially when looking to achieve a weight loss goal and using intermittent fasting, when we have periods of time where we're not eating, um, having that satiety signal activated is so helpful because you aren't fighting your body. You're, you're actually just working with your physiology and you're, you don't have to be hungry while achieving your weight loss goal. Um, Kimberly, are you trying to make more recipes using different noodles? People like, I'm not sure if you mean like, uh, pasta alternatives. If so, I literally have a video coming out on that very soon. I just filmed it and it's coming out very soon. But yeah, I, I love using a lot of pasta alternatives that aren't going to be um, really high in refined carbohydrates. So um, I do have a couple videos coming out very soon that I think you'll really enjoy. So make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on because you have a lot of great content coming your way. 
Okay, Joyce. Hi, Adam. So I'm allergic to banana and pumpkin, and I really want to make your protein pancake. Is there something else I can substitute into this recipe? Yes. So uh, I haven't tried it myself, but um, one of the a and peeps just emailed me, I think it was on like Friday or it was one day last week, and said that they swapped out because they didn't have any banana or pumpkin. They swapped out the banana or pumpkin for a quarter cup of cottage cheese and said it tasted amazing, and they actually felt like the texture was even better. Um, so you'll have to test that out. And let me know what you think, uh, but that is a good swap if you are allergic to banana um, and pumpkin or if you don't like banana or pumpkin or if you're just looking to increase the protein content even further. Um, Amanda, is there a limit to how much protein your body can absorb at one time? I have a video that goes more in depth on the research on this because this is a big topic. Um, if you search on YouTube, like in my YouTube section, like autumn baits and then um, how much protein you can eat at a meal. That video should pop up right away. It's not really the limiting factor isn't really how much your body can absorb. It's how much you can eat because it is very hard to eat a lot of protein at one meal. Even increasing it to about 30 grams of complete protein is very difficult for most people um, just because it is so satiating. So I would be, I would just focus on making sure you're just splitting your protein needs evenly between preferably three meals. Um, that way you're actually able to fit all your protein needs in and you won't have to worry about um, getting enough. Oh, thank you, Adriana. I love your egg avocado salad. So delicious. Thank you so much. Uh, Steven. You mentioned last week that caffeine could stimulate digestion during your fasting window. Is there a way to tell if it has? Um, so I think I remember your email, Stephen. And um, so what Stephen's referring to is last week we talked about like certain things um, can break a fast, even though it's technically not something that most people would consider able to break a fast. And especially if your goal is weight loss, what, or sorry, not weight loss, gut health. Um, what we want to focus on is making sure that we're not stimulating digestion. So caffeine, it's not that it necessarily can stimulate digestion. It can actually slow down the migrating motor complex for some people. And the migrating motor complex is what helps to flush out left behind food and bacteria from the GI tract. Um, so if you're looking to stimulate your migrating motor complex with the goal of gut health specifically, um, then for some people, drinking coffee or even if it's black or unsweetened or tea for that matter is not a great option because it can cause that bit of, of a cortisol spike. One way that you might be able to tell, there's not really a for certain way to tell if you are getting that bit of a cortisol spike that could stop migrating motor complex. But one way that you could tell is to test your blood sugar with like a finger stick um, when you have your coffee. And if you notice that your blood sugar spikes a bit when you have your coffee, even though it's unsweetened and has nothing in it, then this could be a sign that your body is releasing cortisol, which is then releasing uh, glucose from your liver um, and from your muscles and making it so that you might be having migrating motor complex uh, slow down as well. So that is one little test that you can do to kind of get an idea. It's not foolproof, um, but you can at least get a bit of an idea. Are there more smoothie recipes coming without dairy? Yeah, so for most of my recipes, you can actually swap out, like if it says Greek yogurt, um, you can use a plant-based Greek yogurt instead. I like to make sure that my recipes are very um, individualized where you can make them fit your food preferences or your goals. So if you are plant-based, then you can just take like the Greek yogurt or the skier and use a plant-based um, alternative. I've only really found a couple that I'd recommend. I think the main one is Kite Hill, their unsweetened Greek style yogurt. I believe it has like 19 grams per serving. So that would be a good alternative to like the um, regular Greek yogurt if you can't use it in my recipes. Jessica. Is it okay to do strength training while fasted in the morning as a woman? I've heard mixed thoughts on working out fasted in the morning because of raised cortisol levels in the morning. Actually, when your cortisol levels are raised, is your body trying to uh, increase your energy levels and, and help you get ready and started for the day. So it's actually a kind of nice time to be um, incorporating strength training because of that. Uh, you will inherently increase cortisol levels a bit when you are using something like resistance training because it does require some of that um, glucose. So the body is releasing it from stored areas like the liver or the muscles. 
Uh, so you will inherently get raised cortisol levels when you are um, working out regardless of if it's fasted or not. Um, but in terms of like seeing the best benefits, it really also just depends on the person. And if you find that you can get the best, your best workout done in the morning and done consistently, then that's what I would focus on more and making sure that you then when you go to break your fast, eat enough nutrients to support your body's needs and recovery um, during that eating window. So for myself, I really enjoy working out first thing in the morning. I work out completely fasted. I don't even have coffee. I just have water and sometimes electrolytes as well. Um, and that works out well for me. And then I just make sure I eat enough during my eating window. Sometimes I'll work out in the eating window, um, like after I've eaten, but that's really just a time thing. Like if I wasn't able to fit in my workout in the morning, I'll fit it during the eating window. The one thing I would just watch out for is working out too late in the evening. So trying to avoid as much as possible um, doing higher intensity exercise, um, like right before you're going to go to bed, because it can cause that increased cortisol, which then can cause you to disrupt melatonin and make it harder to fall or stay asleep. And that sleep is so important for achieving um, a weight loss or even just a wellness goal in general. Even if your goal is to increase muscle mass, we need that uh, muscle recovery when we're sleeping. So we don't want to mess with our sleep by having our workout be too late in the evening, especially if it's a higher intensity exercise. But again, it just depends on each person. So you can play around with it and see what feels best for you. If you feel best working out like during your lunch hour, work out during your lunch hour. If you feel best um, working out in the morning, do it in the morning, but just make sure it's something you can do consistently as well. Oh, thank you so much, Joyce. I just want to thank you for teaching me how to fast and eat. I've been doing 16-8 since mid-June and have lost four inches off my waist since then. I'm so thankful. Congratulations, Joyce. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, okay. I try to eat three meals, but it's hard to get full protein needs in one sitting. Do you recommend protein-based snack? Um... I would try and aim for those three meals as much as possible. And if you find that you're really not able to get it in, in um, each of your meals, then I would take a look at what you're eating in addition to that protein at each of your meals. I talked about this in a video, I think last week or the week before on balancing out fat to proteins. One issue I found like in the general keto community, for example, or the very, very low carb community um, is that it's there's such an extreme focus on getting enough fats, um, that protein can often be left out or underutilized. So we want to prioritize protein. That's the first thing that we should consider and then add in fats to satiety and then add in um, like the fibers and the other foods to satiety as well. We shouldn't be filling up on fats and fiber first and dismissing protein and not getting enough of that because that's going to be the most important factor for helping to maintain muscle mass and maintain metabolism during the weight loss process. Uh, Kat. Sorry, a little off topic, but meaning to ask this for a while. When you recommend using ginger tea in the evening, will tea bags give the same effect as using raw ginger? It depends on the tea. If it's using just regular, real, like um, dehydrated ginger, for example, in the tea bags, then it should be fine. It should give the same benefit unless it's just like a flavor, a ginger flavored tea where it doesn't have like the same ginger compounds in there. So um, I would take a look at the ingredients of your tea and see if it actually uses like dehydrated ginger in there. If it does, then it should work. It should be fine. Kind of like the um, Sailor's Cure-All tea that I've shared in the past. They use dehydrated ginger and it's great. Uh, but otherwise, then you, you might just want to like chop up some raw ginger and, and throw it in there to get the benefits. Uh, Mindy or Mindy's mom. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hi from SoCal. Thank you for all your hard work and sharing with us. I'm loving your vanilla protein powder question. What do you think about matcha with collagen? Uh, great. I love collagen. It's great. Um, additional source of amino acids, but not complete protein. So one thing to consider, it's not a complete protein. So I wouldn't necessarily count it as a protein source. It's more like a supplement. Um, but it does have a lot of great benefits, as I've talked about in, I think, a video from like two weeks ago. Um, so if you are going to have matcha with collagen, just make sure to have it during your eating window because it will break a fast. Emily, late but made it. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, thank you, 
the Dreaming Druid, don't forget to hit the like button. Yes, please. If you guys can give this video a thumbs up, really helps support my channel, um, really helps spread the message and helps other people to achieve their goals without having to count calories and without having to feel hungry, which is really my mission. Want everybody to just feel amazing and to achieve their goals without feeling like they have to just be hungry all the time. So please give this video a thumbs up, really helps support the channel. Uh, Vicky, will the protein powder burn if I cook it for pancakes? No. Um, although if you are making the protein, like, um, protein hot chocolate, I would just make sure to cook it on a low setting more, more so just because dairy in general can curdle. So you just want to make sure you, uh, get it warm, but without having it have that negative side effect. Uh, Skills many. Happy Monday. Okay, I'm going to try and scroll down some of the questions more recently. Is a protein smoothie considered a snack? It depends on how you make your protein smoothie. If you make one of mine, they are complete meals. They have really high quality protein, um, fat and fiber. Um, so if you're making a protein smoothie to actually have those other components in there, then it is going to be considered more of a complete meal. That's what I like to break my fast with. That's what I'm making right after this. Uh, so I can get all my nutrient needs in within that smoothie. Otherwise, if you're just making it with like protein and mixing it with almond milk or something and a bit of ice, then yeah, that's not a complete meal. And I would consider adding in other sources of fat and fiber to make it a complete meal because I have found the best success from a weight loss perspective with meals and not snacks. Um, so if you're able to just upgrade that protein smoothie a bit, add in the high quality fats and fibers, then that can be helpful for actually making it a complete meal. I have so many recipes, so many recipes on my blog, on my YouTube, obviously I have my smoothie cookbook as well, smoothies in all of my various programs um, that are tailored to make them actually a complete meal. So you can check out all the resources for um, some additional inspo. Have some more water. <laughs> uh... Chana, does it make sense for me to have more than one smoothie in a day? If I need high protein, maybe one at the end of my fast. My goal is 124 grams of protein. If that is the only way that you can fit in enough high quality protein, then you can experiment with that and see how it goes for you. Although I do like to see protein sources from a variety of different sources. So having like the Greek yogurt and protein powder in the smoothie um, or just the protein powder in the smoothie or just the Greek yogurt and then having like maybe eggs or chicken or salmon um, at another, like we get different benefits from all these different sources of protein. And that's where using, let me go back to here. That's where using right here, my tips to get more protein can be useful um, because oftentimes the barrier for getting enough protein is that you actually like have to cook it. <laughs> so it's not like some of these other fast and easy um, types of foods, like you can just munch on some carrots and hummus, for example, without having to cook. You actually have to cook eggs. You have to actually cook chicken. So having these already cooked options uh, just in your pantry or in your fridge can be very helpful. So obviously I put on here the cottage cheese, the skier and Greek yogurt, um, my zero sugar protein powder, eggs with some of these other proteins. Um, so like pre-cooked breakfast sausage is really great. Eggs do cook up pretty fast, but you can also have pre-hard boiled eggs if that's very helpful for you canned tuna, pre-cooked rotisserie chicken, um, tempeh for plant-based. So getting a variety will give us different benefits. Um, so ideally aiming to get a variety of different um, protein sources as well. Uh, so just for example, like salmon will have a higher amount of omega-3 fatty acids, but then with eggs, we get the additional choline, which is really important for brain health and memory. Okay, answer a couple more questions and then I need to go break my fast. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Bogdan, greetings from UK. Your videos are really nice and helpful. With your help and other nutritionists, I lost 25 kilograms of fat and build lean muscle in eight months. Congratulations. Wow, that's great. Jay-Z, I have a dessert of some skier with cacao um, or sometimes with protein powder. Yeah, that's a that's a great like little dessert where you can get like a little bit of a sweet flavor, but without the sugar, um, it, you can take actually my chocolate protein powder, mix that with Greek yogurt, and then like throw some berries on there. Really good. 
or my zero sugar um, uh, hot chocolate recipe. I have two different hot chocolate recipes on my blog, also on my YouTube channel. So good. Zero added sugar. Amazing. And has, I think it's 19 or 18 grams of complete protein in that recipe. Hello, Autumn. Which meal should be the heaviest? I don't recommend having like one heavy meal or one larger meal. I recommend trying to split them up evenly in between your three meals. Although if you find that you need to have um, just because of like time or like however your schedule is, um, or if you don't like to eat a, a heavier meal in the evening, I do recommend trying to have your first and second meal then be like the quote higher, um, heavier, higher protein meals. And then your last meal could be a little bit lighter. Um, but I do try and recommend having them split evenly just for best results in terms of making sure you're getting an even distribution of protein and amino acids throughout the day, um, but also to help prevent sugar cravings after each of those subsequent meals. Uh, Adriana, do you have any recipes for mug cakes? Yes, I do. I have pumpkin spice mug cake and a chocolate mug cake. You can find both recipes on my blog. So just, you can even type onto YouTube or into Google Autumn Bates mug cake recipe and both those should pop up. So you don't have to like search it through my blog. So good, especially the pumpkin spice one. Really good. <laughs> Yes, Kimberly, the post-workout smoothie you made um, the short for is amazing. Can you make more post-workout smoothies specifically for post-workouts? Absolutely. I'm making smoothies every day. I'll definitely make more of those if you guys like it. <laughs> Hello, high, high protein autumn smoothie. Cheers. I love it. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So this is week three that we're starting of the fall intermittent fasting challenge. Um, if you guys want to join, it's not too late. You can check out the details link down description below. We still have this week and next week of the challenge. Really amazing support within the Facebook group, obviously in the chat. Um, so if you guys want to join, check out the link in the description down below. I believe I also have my zero sugar protein powder linked in the description below too. But if you guys want to check that out, try and get additional high quality protein in your day, you can check out on my website at autumnlnutrition.com. So autumn, E-L-L-E, nutrition.com. Um, we will be having another live stream next week for week four. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. It'll be on Monday at 9 a.m. PST. Uh, otherwise, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, cheers, smoothie cheers, keto coffee cheers, whatever you're drinking, cheers. And I will see you.